multiplying fractions. So let's consider an example. There are 30 pupils in a class. Two-thirds of the class are boys. How many are boys? Since we have the den uh, denominator 3, so we will divide the entire class of 30 into three equal parts. But out of three parts, there are actually two parts for the boys. So there are three equal parts, which is actually equal to 30. So therefore, 30 divided by 3 is equal to 10. I have two equal parts for the boys. So therefore, 2 times 10 is equal to 20. So there are 20 boys in a class. Abstractly, I can solve this one by putting the equation such that n is equal to the number of boys because I want to I want to know the number of boys. So I will put n is equal to two thirds of the entire number of class, which is actually 30. So in order to multiply this two thirds times 30, I'll make the whole number 30 as fraction such that I will write one in the denominator of 30. Now I can have here two times 30 all over 3 times 1. Before I multiply 2 and 30 as well as 3 and 1, I'll reduce this one first by removing the greatest common factor between 30 and 3. So I'll divide 30 and 3 by 3. So 30 divided by 3 which is actually 10. Okay. As well as 30 uh, as well as 3 divided by 3 which is actually 1. So I have near, here 2 times 10 all over 1 times 1 or simply as 1. So in, in short I have here 2 times 10 which is equal to 20. So therefore there are 20 boys in a class. To summarize these steps in multiplying fraction by another fraction, I have here. First, write the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. Then, reduce if possible such that we remove the greatest common factor between the numerators and denominators. Let's have a second example. So what is the product of 5 over 6 and 8 over 15? Before we will get the product of this, let's recall the process in multiplying fraction by another fraction. So we have step number 1. So write the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. Then after that, reduce if needed. So I will write the equation of 5 over 6 times 8 over 15. Then... I will write 5 over 8 times 6 over 15. Before, I'll multiply 5 and 8 as well as 6 and 15. I'll think first of a number that can reduce 5 and 15, which is 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. Next, think of a number that can divide 8 and 6, which is actually 2. So 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4, all over, okay, 6 divided by 2, which is actually 3. So then, I can write now, so 1 times 4, all over 3 times 3. So the product is 1 times 4, all over 3 times 3 is equal to 4 over 9. So let's have another example. So Frank has 50 bands. He sold 4 pips of it. How many bands were left to Frank? So we will represent the entire part of bands, which is actually 50. And we will divide the entire parts into 5 parts. However, 4 out of 5 were sold and only one part was left. If you will notice, there are 5 equal parts. So there are 4, 50 divided by 5 equal parts is equal to 10. If you will observe also that there's only one part left here. So meaning to say, 
there are 10 bonds net. So abstractly, we can solve this one into two steps. So let's have the first step here. So I have 4 pips of 50, meaning to say I multiply 4 pips times 50. But I'll move or I'll make 50 as improper fraction, such that I'll write 1 in the denominator of 50. <clears throat> so again, remove the greatest common factor between 5 and 50. So 50 divided by 5 is equal to 1, and 50 divided by 5 is equal to 10. Okay, then I have here 4, uh, 4 times 10 all over 1 times 1. So I have here 4 times 10, which is equal to 40. So this is the number of bonds sold. But I want to find out how many bonds were left to from. So I will resolve to step number 2, wherein 50 minus 40 is equal to 10. So therefore, there were 10 bonds left. Let's have the product of mixed number by another mixed number. Say for instance, what is the product of 1 and 1 half and 3 and 2 thirds? So I'll write first the equation 1 and 1 half times 3 and 2 thirds. So before I'll multiply these fractions, I'll convert all mixed numbers into improper fractions. So say for instance, I have 1 and 1 half, I'll convert this to improper fraction such that 2 times 1 and add that to the numerator 1 also. So I have here 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 which is actually 3 over 2. So we will do it the same as 3 and 2 thirds. So I have here 3 times 3 is equal to 9 plus 2 which is equal to 11. Copy the denominator 3. So I have here 3 over 2 times 11 over 3. Before I multiply 3 and 11 all over 2 times 3, I'll remove first the greatest common factor between 3 and 3. So 3 divided by 3 will give me 1, and 3 divided by 3 also is 1. So I have here 1 times 11 all over 2 times 1. So I have now 11 over 2. But I'll convert this improper fraction into mixed number. So I have here 11 over 2. So 11 divided by 2. So ask yourself, how many 2's uh, can you get in 11? So there are 5. So 5 times 2 will give me 10. Then subtract 11 by 10. So we have 1. So the 1 here will become my numerator and 2 is my denominator. So therefore, I have here n is equal to 5 and 1 half. Now, to summarize uh, the steps in multiplying fraction, which is specifically mixed number, by another mixed number, so we have step number 1. Convert or rewrite all mixed numbers to improper fractions. Then, write the product of the numerators over the product of denominators. Number three, reduce if needed. Meaning to say, we will remove the greatest common factor between the numerators and denominators. So let's have next example. There are 40 pupils in the class. Three pips of the pupils support football team. One half of the remaining supports basketball team. How many pupils support basketball team? Now, in order to solve this word problem, I want to represent the entire class of 40 okay, into 5 equal parts because I have here okay, the denominator 5. So, the entire class will be divided into 5 equal parts. Out of 5 equal parts, 3 parts are actually for football team or supports football team and 2 parts of the remaining supports basketball and other team. However, okay, out of the two remaining parts, one half or one out of two support basketball team. So as we can see here, the entire parts or the entire 40 pupils is divided into five equal parts. 
So therefore, I can say that 40 will be divided by e to 5, so which is equal to 8. So I can say that 8 pupils support basketball team. Abstractly, I can solve this one into three steps. So step number one, I will get three pips of 40. So I'll convert 40 into improper fraction such that I'll write one in the denominator of 40. Then remove the GCF of 5 and 40. So that is 5 divided by 5 is 1 and 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8. So I have here 8 times 3 all over 1 times 1. So I have here 3 times 8 which is equal to 24. So this 24 represents the number of pupils who support the football team. However, I want to find out the number of pupils who support basketball team. So I have step number 2. So 40 minus 24 is equal to 16. So these are the students who are remaining students. Next, I have step number 3. So from 16, I'll get the half of 16. So therefore, 16 over 1, and remove the greatest common factor between 2 and 16. So I have 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. So 1 times 8 is equal to 8, all over 1 times 1, which is equal to 8. So finally, 8 pupils support the basketball team.